Day three of storms done. Let's move on to day four. Good morning. It is Wednesday, the 24th of May, 2023. Hump day for those of you who work a typical Monday to Friday job. I do not, and Mama Nature certainly does not care. It's going to be another interesting day in the weather department across the state. More thunderstorm chances, a couple uncertainties that we'll talk about here as the forecast progresses, but short story doing exactly the same thing we did yesterday although hopefully without any sort of severe weather mischief popping up during the mid-afternoon in southeast texas we did have a lone severe storm pop up produce damaging straight line winds probably 60 to 70 maybe even higher miles per hour and that unfortunately resulted in at least two fatalities and multiple injuries in a swath of wind damage from Huntsville down to Conroe, knocked down a lot of trees, caused some structural damage, and as far as I know, the fatalities occurred in a structure that collapsed. So that always goes to show you severe thunderstorms can and do produce dangerous weather, just like you might see out of a tornado. In terms of what we're expecting for today, tonight, well, let's take a look out the window, literally. Let's pop on over to what the radar looks like at the time of this recording, a bit before 6 a.m., We've got a line of thunderstorms that have been slowly weakening and have been behaving themselves for the last several hours. They're moving into the Victoria Crossroads, the Coastal Plains, Southeast Texas, a little bubble over Bryan College Station holding itself together quite nicely this morning. We note a couple of new storms developing back on a outflow boundary back in the big country around Abilene. Some high-res model data was pretty animate last night and yesterday with this possibility, so it is entirely plausible. We see additional scattered storms fire up over the next several hours through the morning hours across the big country, southeast into the hill country. Those storms generally moving off to the southeast. Severe weather threat will not be high, but definitely can't rule out cloud to ground lightning, some locally heavy rainfall, gusty winds, and maybe a bit of hail. But the overall severe weather potential with those storms this morning will not be high and will be lower than what we dealt with yesterday afternoon into yesterday night. But in the wake of all these storms, well, what are we going to be dealing with later today? Let's just pop on over to the latest severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. This is going to be for this afternoon, tonight, and early Thursday morning. Now, a couple things to note here. The overall severe weather risks for today, tomorrow, into Friday, slowly shifting further and further west into eastern New Mexico as our initial starting ground for thunderstorms versus the last couple of days where we've seen storms pop up inside of Texas and then they can geo into a big old cluster and rage southeast and make all sorts of noise through the night. Well, in the case, the next few days is same thing except they're going to start in eastern new mexico so the overall whole thing it's just going to move further west but we're still going to have storms moving into texas we're still going to have overnight thunderstorm complexes it's just well starting out further west uh, in terms of today's severe weather risk highest potential if we can see clouds clear will be across the panhandle of texas especially the western half of the panhandle uh, and eastern New Mexico, scattered supercell thunderstorms popping up this afternoon once again. Very large hail possible out of the strongest initial supercells. Localized damaging winds can't rule out a tornado. As time goes on this evening, we'll see a cluster of storms organized in eastern New Mexico, perhaps far west Texas, and those storms will move east into the Texas Panhandle, west Texas, the Permian Basin, and then continue on into portions of the big country, the Concho Valley, the Northern Edwards Plateau, and maybe even the hill country by tomorrow morning. The key difference here is unlike last night's storms, which honestly they mostly behaved once they got out of the big country in Concho Valley, tonight's storms should weaken a bit even more quickly since they're going to start off a little further west. That being said, the storms are still probably going to make a run further southeast tonight, but yeah, I mean, just as, you know, rain, showers, and storms. Let's take a look at the high-rise rapid refresh model. Hey, my magical button of life didn't work. Oh, well, we're going to press this button instead. It'll still work. You can see this is what the HER has firing up this afternoon into this evening across western portions of Texas. You can see eastern New Mexico, the Panhandle, West Texas. Scattered storms fire up late this afternoon. They generally congeal into a cluster by or around 8 o'clock, move southeast into portions of the Panhandle, West Texas, the Big Country, the Concho Valley, and the Hill Country by Thursday morning, although this model is 
is several hours later with the storms than we are dealing with this morning. Whether or not that's the case, we're just going to have to wait and see. Model data was pretty, was a couple hours slow with this morning's round of storms too, but uh, at least the severe weather threat tonight would be lower as storms make it down into the Concho Valley and Big Country and Hill Country. But still, heavy rainfall, cloud to ground, lightning, gusty winds, maybe some small hail with those storms. Now, Panhandle, West Texas, as those storms come in from New Mexico, we could have 60 to 75 mile an hour winds out of the strongest storms, large hail possibly. Also down in Southwest Texas, you can see we might see a few supercell thunderstorms this afternoon east of that dry line. Those could have the very large hail, and we can't totally rule out an isolated severe storm this morning through this afternoon across the hill country, especially where we have any remnant outflow boundaries. That would be a situation similar to the one that occurred yesterday from Huntsville down to Conroe with that thunderstorm that popped on a remnant outflow boundary from the storms the previous night that moved southeast, and there was just enough oomph there to squeak out all that wind. All right, let's move in to... Thursday, this is the severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. You can see we're down to a level 1 out of 5 risk, and that just means there's about a 1 in 10 to a 1 in 20 chance for rowdy thunderstorms. This does include portions of eastern New Mexico, as well as the Texas Panhandle, West Texas, Permian Basin, the Guadalupe Mounds, the Davis Mounds, southwest Texas, Big Bend National Park, almost to far west Texas. Now, same thing tomorrow as we're dealing with today. Isolated storms firing up tomorrow afternoon. We may actually end up with a fewer number of storms tomorrow, depending on what happens today. But regardless, if the number of storms tomorrow, any supercells that fire up during the mid to late afternoon through the early evening, same threats, you know, hail up size of tennis balls, localized wind 60 to 70 miles an hour, maybe a brief tornado. And then we'll have to see if we get a cluster of storms tomorrow night. Uh, some model data is actually suggesting we may not. And if that's the case, tomorrow night we may actually get a relatively quiet night. But we need to see what's going to happen today and tonight first into tomorrow morning because, for example, if the panhandle stays mostly cloudy today and we don't see a whole lot going on, that'll just allow the panhandle to recover and become more unstable tomorrow and increase the severe weather chances tomorrow. So... What happens tomorrow is going to depend on today, as what happens on Friday will depend on what happens tomorrow. Don't you love it when I go riddly mode? Yeah, I'm kind of tired, but you know what? Mama Nature's going to do what Mama Nature's going to do. All right, let's just fast forward to Friday at this point. Severe weather outlook, you can see almost identical to tomorrow, except a little further west. Panhandle, West Texas, especially along and west of I-27. Uh, west, Western Permian Basin, Southwest Texas, Davis Guadalupe Mounds, Trans-Pecos, Big Bend National Park, almost a far west Texas. Same thing goes, and in the eastern New Mexico. Isolated to scattered supercells firing up during the mid to late afternoon hours. This one may uh, be most of eastern New Mexico, and we may stay somewhat quiet during the afternoon, minus the uh, Big Bend region. And then as we get into Thursday evening, or excuse me, not Thursday evening, Friday evening, we may see a cluster or two of severe storms in eastern New Mexico move east into the Panhandle, West Texas, Permian Basin. And then those storms may continue east, not necessarily severe, but with the potential for heavy rainfall into portions of northwest Texas, the big country, the Concho Valley. But again, what happens Friday will depend on what happens tomorrow. And what happens tomorrow will depend on what happens today and tonight. Welcome to Fort Forecasting weather during the late spring months when we don't have a whole lot going on in the upper levels, but just enough to make the weather forecast all that more interesting. And for what it's worth, here is what the North American model shows unfolding Friday afternoon through Saturday morning. We're using a lower resolution, more coarse weather model, but you can see how it develops those storms in eastern New Mexico Friday afternoon, moves them east of Texas during the evening hours Friday. They make it all the way into portions of the big country, Concho Valley, almost hill country, honestly, before dissipating around sunrise on Saturday. So... Yeah, we're pretty much just going to keep this whole routine up for a while. I mean, there'll be some differences day to day. Some days may be a little quieter than others, but this whole weather pattern we're in, yeah, it's going to probably continue until we're into June, uh, the way things are looking. But hey, you never know. In terms of forecast rain totals over the next three days, this is 7 a.m. this morning through 7 a.m. Saturday. You can see rain totals are coming up 
and the places that really need the rain, honestly, the Texas Panhandle, West Texas, Northwest Texas, and the big country. The potential for one to four inches of rain on a pretty widespread basis. Some folks would get less, some folks could get more. Also seeing that bit of an enhancement across the Big Bend in Southwest Texas, higher terrain around Alpine, the potential for one half inch up to two inches of rain, and then lighter rain amounts across portions of North and Central Texas, the hill country where these thunderstorm complexes are tending to dissipate the following morning after they roll on into the state. But hey, you know what? Panhandle West Texas, I know y'all have had rain the last few days, but you know what? Y'all have been in drought too long. We are going to give you all the water we can, refill those lakes, hopefully. And you know what? There probably will be some localized flooding issues as we progress through the week because soils are going to become a little too saturated in spots and then the runoff is going to increase. But you know what? That's okay. I would rather have a little too much water than not enough water. And given the drought, y'all are still going to need more rain after this. So... Be happy, take it, don't drive your vehicle into flood waters or into a flooded field, since some fields are going to turn into lakes. It's not a good idea. Trust me, speaking from experience on storm chases, it's not fun when you get your vehicle stuck in a field that has turned into a lake. Or a dirt road through a field that has become a lake. Let me tell you, it's just... <laughs> I mean, it, it, there's some interesting stories out of it, but it's not fun at the time. All right, that is the Texas weather roundup for Wednesday. We'll be keeping an eye on things as usual. We're going to have storm chasers out and about again today across eastern New Mexico into west Texas with live storm chasing video. We'll have live severe weather coverage if necessary, and just like we did yesterday, we will have the hourly weather updates as we get into the late afternoon through the nighttime hours. Just keeping an eye on things here as we like to do at the Texas Storm Chase. You can keep an eye on the sky with the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. It includes the interactive weather radars, the down to your neighborhood forecast, our latest storm chasing videos and forecast videos and articles. Just search for Texas Storm Chasers in your device's app store. We'll chat with y'all later. Y'all have a great Wednesday and God bless.